What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350 courtesy of Mercedes-Benz of Hagerstown in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one today because there's actually a couple nice changes for the 2022 GLE. And of course, this one is going to be competing with other SUVs like the Genesis GV80, BMW X5, and Volvo XC90 as well. And so in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering wheel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so essentially there are two different configurations for the GLE 350. You got the rear wheel drive setup starting at $55,700. Then you have the formatic all wheel drive starting at $58,200. But regardless of the configuration that you go with, the power plant on the 350 is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 255 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 273 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM. Power center rear wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here. But zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 7.1 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 19 in the city, 27 on the highway for the rear wheel drive, 19 city, 26 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking premium unleaded fuel. But so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the GLE, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. It's actually going to be labeled dynamic select and it is located just just to the left of the touchpad controller. And so that will include drive modes such as eco, comfort, sport, and individual, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. So having now gotten all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway here. Let's put the paddle shifters to the test here first and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, so we're gonna do a little combination of the paddle shifter and acceleration test here. And here we go. Acceleration's not bad. Definitely enough for what this SUV is. You're not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway. Having said that, there was a little bit of a delay when it comes to the paddle shifters at least, which is not necessarily a bad thing in an SUV. After all, you're not really going to be using the paddle shifters for maybe acceleration or anything like that. But what you will be using them for is possibly some engine braking. So when you're going down a hill, maybe when it's snowing out, you can use the paddle shifters, do a little bit of engine braking so you're less inclined to actually go sliding off the road. So that's really what the paddle shifters are going to be there for in SUVs anyways. But having said that, like I said, acceleration is plenty fine. But now, Having got that out of the way, let's go ahead and touch on braking. Four wheel ventilated disc brakes will come standard as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes. Comes in at 118 feet, which is plenty respectable. Braking feel is, eh, it's perfectly fine. Definitely not on the firm side, not on the soft side. It's really what this SUV should be, if I'm being honest. But touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. Also though, an adaptive damping suspension. Hallelujah, I love that. You don't always get that on all SUVs, so I am gonna emphasize that a little bit. Essentially what that is, is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only giving you a smoother ride, but also adjusting the suspension during heavy corner and giving you better handling. So like I said, best of both worlds. I love that suspension and the ride quality has been absolutely wonderful. And I will say the roads in Maryland are pretty dang good, but even at that, ride quality has been perfectly fine. It's soaking up any road imperfections just perfectly. So definitely on point there. As far as steering sensitivity goes, let me go ahead and uh, put it in sport. It's definitely leaning towards the looser side of things and we are in an SUV so I guess I shouldn't really expect anything different but wouldn't mind it if they at least firmed up that steering feel just a little bit in that sport driving mode at least but all the other driving modes are super loosey goosey but the sport driving mode is still kind of on the looser side so wouldn't mind it if that was firmed up a bit but touching on cabin noise you guys could probably tell I'm going 52 miles per hour there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin so that is definitely on point and along those lines I did want to mention there is an available acoustic comfort package that's going to include a laminated front windshield and laminated front door glass then as well if you wanted the 
ultimate serene cabin in your GLA. But touching that on visibility, I could see perfectly fine out the back. Actually, really good. Definitely not going to have any issues there. And this is a pretty decent size SUV, so I'm kind of surprised about that. So visibility is pretty good. Rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come standard across the board. So whenever the GLE detects any kind of missed rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So that's pretty nice. And there's an optional head up display that goes for $1,100 if you wanted to go that route as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350. Looking dang good. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Dual horizontal aluminum trim bars located within that front grille. That is the standard configuration. You actually can get an illuminated star emblem for $500. We don't have it today, but that of course does look pretty cool at night. You do have some chrome trim accenting, of course, towards the bottom of that front grille. I think you guys can see that there. There are also some parking sensors. That's what these little circles are within the front grille there as well, just so you don't go pulling into anything. It's always a good thing. To the sides, LED headlights do come standard with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark and at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you then led daytime running lights also coming standard but newly standard for 2022 here's one of the changes for this year automatic high beams now come standard across the board before 2021 model year they were optional so i do like that they're now standard that's pretty cool and actually there's an adaptive headlight setup for 750 dollars that includes ultra wide high beam feature as well but adaptive headlights meaning when you're going around a bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a animal or person bicyclist whatever so that's definitely pretty handy there as well but pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the gle all right so now since we are around to the side of this one aluminum roof rails do come standard across the board rear privacy glass also coming standard you do have those satin chrome window surrounds coming standard as well then taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will also be heated with led integrated turret signals and they will actually be power folding then as well then take a look down at the wheel configuration 19 inch twin five spoke alloys coming standard however there are several different wheel designs available ranging from 19 to 20 to 21 inch wheel design so definitely got some options there we do have one of those options so i like the wheel design of this one actually they're like this multi-spoke look so it looks good to me but anyways pretty much rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the gle all right so now since we are around to the back of this one rear spoiler with an integrated brake light does come standard rear window wiper just below that you do have the formatic badging located on the right hand side if you get the all-wheel drive configuration of course led taillights they are super bright love that added illumination at night that's really a safety feature in itself once again to tie in with the front bumper you do have some chrome trim accenting located towards the bottom portion of that rear bumper and then to the sides you have integrated dual exhaust outlets with a chrome finish so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around to the back, when it comes to opening the rear tailgate, there is a button on the tailgate itself, if you like, but it is a hands-free power tailgate that does come standard across the board. So that's always nice to so simply just kick your foot underneath if your hands are full and it is going to automatically open up them for you. But once opened up, we actually do have an optional third row configuration, believe it or not, which is pretty darn cool. And by the way, that package goes for $2,100. But having said that, the third row is not going to be all that spacious, but it is available. And I do like that we have it here. But anyways, cargo capacity behind that second row at least comes in at 33.3 cubic feet if you were to fold that second row down that bumps it up to 74.9 cubic feet then in that cargo area you will find some cargo lighting there are grocery bag hooks there are cargo tie down anchors there's a rear cargo cover which is located within the in-floor storage if you wanted to hide it away there if it's not in use which is where it currently is but did want to mention that it is there there's some netted storage found on the left side as well but 
overall the cargo area has pretty much everything you could possibly want for a cargo area i'll just put it that way then make your way up to the rear legroom third row legroom is uh like i said not all that much for reference i'll give it a shot i mean even six feet tall so not a whole lot of space going on back there maybe left for small children but then make our way to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 40.9 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there there is a rear center armrest with cup holders for those rear passengers there is rear ventilation there are phone charging ports back there as well a little bit of storage right next to those phone charging ports by the way if you wanted heated second row seats it goes for 580 dollars that is available there is four zone climate control also available that goes for 860 dollars if you wanted to go that route but pretty much everything you could possibly want with the exception of rear window sunshades i wouldn't mind seeing those in the second row there but then make our way up to the front seats power adjustable front seats with four-way power lumbar coming standard they do come with memory settings for not only the driver but the passenger as well and i almost forgot to mention there's rear seats back there real quick they are power adjustable rear seats those buttons are going to be located on the doors for the passengers which you usually don't see in any other vehicle so thought i'd mention that but back to the front seats like i said memory settings for both driver and passenger heated front seats come standard mercedes-benz tex upholstery coming standard there are some new two-toned upholstery color combinations for 2022 another subtle change for the 2022 model year at least leather seating goes for $1,620 ventilated front seats for $450 and multi-contour front seats with the massage function for $1,100 but as you can imagine the seats were plenty adjustable so I personally didn't have any issues with finding my perfect driving position for my short test drive here today but then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped and it is heated for an additional $250 on that one and then there's actually a wood leather combination for the steering wheel that goes for $600 if you wanted to go that route but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here it is a pretty heavy duty key I like the feel to it you got lock unlock and the button to pop the rear hatch on it but essentially it is all keyless entry with a push button start and then you can get the remote start once you download the Mercedes me app but for this case all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that does come standard so that is definitely very nice and i always mention this with mercedes my favorite thing to play around with on the gauges is there is a display or designs and display mode that is available and you can choose between classic sport progressive and understated so four different gauge clusters that can completely change the look of everything up there so that is my favorite thing to play around with it's got all your basics of course like outside temperature there's a digital speedometer and so on but definitely play around with that if you end up getting a GLE or really any Mercedes because it's nice playing around with what the gauges actually look like but anyways then make your way to overall interior quality a power sunroof comes standard auto dimming rear view mirror also standard just below that rear view mirror you have home link controls for up to three different garage doors always gotta love that dual zoom climate control also coming standard wireless phone charger located just in front of the cup holders here there's an amg line interior that goes for 400 dollars that gives you stainless steel pedals sport front seats and some amg floor mats as well do want to also mention another option heated and cold front cup holders that goes for 180 dollars so i probably would go for that it's not that expensive for what that is so i kind of like that Overall, when it comes to interior quality, though, you got contrast stitching. You have the brightest ambient lighting in existence with 64 different colors. I love how Mercedes does ambient lighting. I say that, I think, in every single video I ever touch on with ambient lighting. I always credit Mercedes for having the best ambient lighting setup, brightness, colors, all of that of any other brand out there right now. So I definitely am a big fan of that. Just to the front and to the middle here, like I said, you have that wireless phone charger, 12 volt power outlet, your dual cup holders. And we actually do have the heated and cooled cup holders. I didn't even see that. That's pretty cool. Within the center armrest, there is definitely a decent amount of storage with a phone charging port located within that as well and i like the little grab handles for both the driver and passenger too with the ambient lighting running right around it so definitely a cool look to it without a doubt but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display and so the tech display is going to mirror the gauges it's also a 12.3 inch screen it is a color touch screen display but you can control it through touchpad controller like i was saying you could also control it by simply saying hey mercedes and then it's going to do whatever you tell it to do so that's pretty cool too bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay factory 
three navigation system as well. You could check out your climate control information up there, drive modes, of course, as well. But my favorite part, if you swipe up, you actually have a couple options for different themes you could set it on. Themes kind of adjust everything within the vehicle from the power moonroof opening and closing to the ambient lighting colors to a lot of different things. So I love the theme section of Mercedes. It really changes the entire experience at any given time. So I always think that's pretty cool. But you can also, of course, check out your radio information up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, there is a standard sound system, but then there's the optional 13 speaker Burmester surround sound system, which we don't have today, but that one is going to give you 590 watts and nine channel digital amplifier and dual subwoofers up front as well but having said that let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one i missed that song it's been a while since i listened to outcast but yeah sound system was okay it was plenty fine honestly for standard sound system that wasn't that bad of course you do the burmester for a better option but that wasn't that bad. Honestly, I didn't mind it. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the GLE in reverse, it will give you an extremely high definition rear view camera. And if you wanted it, it can even take up the entire screen, which I can't say the same for, for a lot of other manufacturers out there. And again, it's extremely high definition, which I absolutely love. Surround view monitor then is going to come with the premium package as well. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety and so to start iihs top safety pick plus which pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard there is a driver's knee airbag as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks but also coming standard active brake assist driver attention monitoring system crosswind assist blind spot assist parktronic which is one of the craziest things in the world essentially if you activate that it will search out a parking spot you can select it and then you can determine whether or not you want the vehicle to pull in or back in. It's nuts. Adaptive braking technology also coming standard and there is a parking damage detector via the Mercedes Me app. So it's gonna let you know immediately when somebody opens up their door into your vehicle, which is good to know. But anyways, driver assistance plus package is going to be optional for $1,950. That gives you all your advanced safety like adaptive cruise control, active steering assist, evasive steering assist, autonomous emergency braking, blind spot assist, and there's plenty more as well. But Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the GLE, excellent safety, although the driver assistance package really should be standard at a vehicle of this price point. Great interior quality. It's almost flawless. Like I, I have nothing bad to say about the interior quality in this thing. Great driving dynamics as always. Wouldn't have minded if the paddle shifters were a bit quicker though. But overall, driving dynamics is plenty fine in this thing. Ambient lighting is second to none. Ambient lighting is wonderful in any Mercedes. As far as room for improvement goes, this thing can get dang pricey pretty darn quick. So do want to mention that there's a lot of options. And honestly, in my personal opinion, the Genesis GV80 may indeed be a better value. It's a little more spacious and it gives you a heck of a lot for the money for what you're getting with that one. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the new GLE 350 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube or if you want to see updates on when I got a flat tire in the middle of the road. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.